Hello, I'm JW, and we're continuing with the series on testing, and this time it's about polarity. Now, of course, on AC circuits, there isn't actually any such thing as polarity because there's no negative or positive, because, of course, uh, AC, the actual direction of current, is changing all the time. So what we're really talking about is where the line and neutral are connected, and making sure those are in the places we want them to be. Now, in terms of connecting equipment, it wouldn't actually make the slightest difference in which way it was around it was connected, so uh, in that regard, it really doesn't matter at all. But where it does matter is certain things in regards to safety. Now, in the UK at least, uh, lighting circuits in particular only have the switch in the line conductor, so that uh, when the switch is off, there's no actual power at the light fitting, so the end user can therefore go and replace the lamps or whatever without any danger of getting an electric shock. And of course, if you had the switch in the neutral, that would mean that although the lights still turned on and off, the actual lamp holder would still be live even when the light wasn't actually working. And a similar thing can occur with the threaded lamp holders, so the sort of screw-fitting things, which are generally unpopular in the UK, but nevertheless do exist. And on those, you want to make sure that the centre pin, or basically the end contact, is connected to line, and then the outer threaded part is connected to neutral. And this is because on certain types of fitting, the threaded part is actually exposed, even when the lamp is installed. So, of course, it uh, can be actually touched by someone just uh, reaching up there to grab hold of it. And again, these are fairly minor points, but uh, nevertheless, it is necessary to ensure that they are connected in the correct way. But uh, in terms of most everything else, so say equipment itself isn't going to be affected by this, but it is really just a safety issue. And the same thing applies really with certain socket outlets, uh, most of which have a switch on. And in many cases, that is a single pole switch. So again, you want to make sure that that is in the line. And plugs in the UK also have a fuse inside. And again, it's important that that's in the line conductor. Because if the fuse failed, then it could leave equipment in a dangerous condition, as in still connected. And people could get a shock from it, even though the fuse had failed. So it's simply a question of making sure that line and neutral are in the correct place. Now, in terms of actually testing for polarity, if you've done the initial test uh, way back at the beginning, which confirms the protective conductor is continuous, and that will be the uh, protective one or the earth one, as we've got here. And if you do the test where it's temporarily putting a link in here, between the line and earth, and then basically testing at the end here, then you have actually already confirmed polarity, because of course you're testing with the line conductor and the protective one. If you got the, say, line and neutral swapped around, you'd find that there was no continuity here, and of course you would have to go back and then find out what the problem was. So in regards of that, it's fairly likely you've already done the polarity test along with that one right at the beginning. But uh, if you haven't, then of course you can just uh, test it again at this point. And polarity is one of those tests where you can actually test it either with no power connected, as in you would do it at the beginning here, or you can actually test it when the power has been connected. And uh, certainly if you've already done this on all of the circuits, you don't have to go in and individually test all of the circuits individually, because of course you already know that they are correct, at least up to the point of the consumer unit or incoming point. But even if you have done that, you still need to make sure that the supply coming into the building is, of course, connected correctly inside the consumer unit. Otherwise, you could end up with the entire installation connected with the wrong polarity, or in other words, line and neutral reversed, which would, of course, override any of the uh, previous tests you've done. You'd end up with the entire thing incorrect. Now, in terms of actually uh, checking this, this is where the supply is essentially connected to the installation for the first time. And, of course, by this stage, you've already done all of the other tests which we've covered in previous videos. Now, uh, certainly in the UK, a typical arrangement would be the uh, incoming supply here, where you've got a fuse, and this is provided by the actual company that provides your electricity. And this is uh, generally sealed equipment, as is the electricity meter. And you will have a wire coming from here, going into the meter there, and then the neutral will also come from the same place, and that goes into the meter as well. And again, this will be installed by whoever's uh, supplying the electricity for you. And generally, that's all sealed as well. And of course, from here, you'll have the wires coming out to your either consumer unit or possibly a separate isolator in a separate box. So it doesn't particularly matter which way around that is. So again, the line and neutral come across to your isolator. And obviously, from there, this would either be inside the consumer unit, so have your circuits and things, or you'd have additional wires coming out and going onto one or more consumer units just alongside that. And the uh, earth, or the uh, protective conductor, would be from the uh, earthing bar. And again, that could be inside the consumer unit or as a separate item outside of it. And that will be connected back to the means of earthing that the supplier has provided. 
or in some cases an earth electrode installed actually directly in the ground. And there's various ways this can be connected, and again that's been covered in a separate video. But in the case of this one we'll say it's one of these where it's connected to the outer covering of the incoming cable. And again this is a fairly common thing on older installations. And that's generally what we call as a TNS type of installation. Could come from the uh, actual cutout here itself, where it'd be directly connected with a neutral, or say an electrode actually in the ground. But in any case, you're going to have a wire from there to your main earthing terminal. Now, before actually switching this isolator on here and energizing the installation, we need to make sure that the neutral and line are in the correct places, and also that the main earth is actually connected. So you would do a continuity test here between the earthing bar and the actual incoming point where the earth is connected. And again, that's just confirming the uh, continuity of that. Yeah, it's a fairly simple thing. And then to check the, uh, these two are connected correctly, you're going to essentially measure the voltage between here and the earthing point, or you can measure it from here, and between here and the earthing point as well. So essentially you're going to use, uh, you could use a multimeter or something that just display the voltage, but a better option is one of the two pole voltage indicating devices. And again, we've seen those in some other videos previously. So between uh, neutral and the uh, earth connection, then you basically should have zero volts or as close to that as practically possible. Maybe a sort of one or something, and depending on the uh, other circumstances of how the earth is connected. But essentially as close to zero as possible. And between the line and the earth, you should have the full mains voltage, which in the UK is supposed to be around 230 volts. But in reality, it can be somewhat higher than that, and it usually is typically in the sort of 240, 245 kind of area. In theory, it could go up as high as 253, but generally that's uh, rather too high, so you might want to investigate why that uh, was actually that high. And finally, again, if you check between line and neutral, then you should find pretty much the same voltage that you had there. Again, that may vary slightly depending on the type of uh, earth connection that you've got. But again, those two things there should be substantially similar. Now, of course, if these things had been uh, switched around, you would find that between the neutral and earth, or what you thought was a neutral, you would get the uh, full line voltage there. And then when you tested between what you thought was line and earth, you would find that it was essentially zero or very close to that. And uh, once you've confirmed this here, as long as you've done the polarity checks on the rest of the installation already, which in most cases you already would have done, then you will know that the rest of the installation, of course, is connected with the correct polarity, or in other words, line and neutral are in the places that they should be. However, you can go and just do a couple of checks within the installation, say just on a socket outlet or a lighting circuit or whatever, just to confirm that that is the case. And again, you would do the same thing here, just check the voltage between those three combinations, and you should get the same results as we've got here. And of course, if you don't, then it means something is uh, fundamentally wrong. And if you've already tested the installation and find that it's uh, correct at the start and then it's still wrong, then goodness knows what's happened, because that theoretically shouldn't be possible. But essentially all you're doing is just making sure that line is actually the line, which then reference to the other two gives you the 230 volts or whatever the incoming voltage you have actually is. So that's uh, polarity, or in other words, uh, line and neutral are connected where they're supposed to be. And it's a very quick and easy test to do. And say if you've done the uh, initial continuity check using the line and protective conductors, then of course you already know that the polarity is correct. If for some reason you didn't do that and you used the other method initially, then you will have to go to each point and then test the voltages between line, neutral and earth, as we saw there, just to make sure that they are all correct. So uh, generally it's worthwhile doing that initial test using the two conductors temporarily linked, because it saves a whole load of time later on. But in some cases it might not be possible to do that, so in which case you'd have to go and check afterwards. And in terms of uh, actual testing, this is a good example of a test which uh, obviously shows that things are correct. And it really proves the fact that just because something turns on and works doesn't necessarily mean it's correct, because even with line and neutral reversed, the actual equipment you connected will still function. But of course, uh, if the wrong polarity there, you're going to have the fuse in the neutral conductor, switches in the neutral, and of course things like those threaded lamp holders could have a live exposed part on the outer threaded bit, rather than being on the pin in the middle. So uh, clearly an important thing to do. So that's it for polarity, and until next time, 
thanks for watching.